After more than 10 years of war in Iraq and Afghanistan, WNCN is taking a look at how it's affecting America's children. We know the struggles service members face when readjusting to life back at home, and research shows children can sometimes be collateral damage. Our Brandon Herring is digging deeper to show you why it's up to our communities to step up for those children. <laughs> There's no doubt these military homecomings are a time for celebration. Some of these warriors return home with physical and mental wounds, and what comes after these reunions isn't always so happy. That's the reality for the Moran family in Fayetteville. He, he, it, it has its ups, ups and downs, but I, um, we managed to get through. 15-year-old Hunter's father served in the Army for 20 years, including a deployment to Iraq and one to Afghanistan. He now has an injured back and a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder. My dad, um, he's a wonderful person, but it, the PTSD with the nightmares and the things, I, um, I, I sometimes I get really um, anxious and like worried, like what's going on. The words to explain it all don't come easily to Hunter or his brother Gavin, the oldest of seven children but they were brave enough to share what they could in hopes it will help others. Yeah, I just kind of see that he's more um, on guard about everything, kind of cautious whenever we're in public. You know, I can only deal with it for so long, and, you know, it, it impacts the family because we'll be out having a family day, doing something fun, and all of a sudden my anxiety kicks in for whatever reason. I have to get up and leave and, you know, go outside or go whatever be by myself to get air and just refocus myself. Because of that self-awareness, retired Sergeant First Class Alan Moran has done well at dealing with the anxiety of PTSD, but he knows it's affected his children. Mood swings and irritability, it's just, you know, it's one of those things I try to control, but can't always control all the time. He will always be a hero to them because he's done a lot to, to earn that. Um, but now we have a situation where dad has, dad is the one who might need a little help sometimes. And Ellen's wife Chrissy knows his transition to life after the military has put a daily burden on their children. Because they have to walk around on eggshells, you know, to make sure, you know, it's not, you know, it's not troublesome. According to research at the University of Southern California, an estimated 5 million children have had a parent or sibling who served in Iraq or Afghanistan since 9-11. And while 70% are coping just fine, 30% are dealing with anxiety, depression, serious thoughts of suicide or other mental and behavioral health issues. The research also found one out of four military children is likely to consider suicide. The average for non-military children is 19%. And after active duty, children of veterans don't qualify for resources to help them cope. The children seem to be the ones that have been left out of the picture. The focus is on the veteran at the VA. So while the family might not be secondary to the veteran, to the VA, they, you know, they, they are in terms of the resources that are available to them. John Freudenberg works at the Partnership for Children of Cumberland County, where he works on filling that gap. As America's military presence in Iraq and Afghanistan draws down, he expects to see more and more children caught in the aftermath of war. It's a great challenge, and these communities need to understand what, you know, what's happening here, understand what some of the challenges that these families are facing, um, and, and work together to do something about it. There is a number of resources that are available out there, but oftentimes it's connecting the families with those resources that is the biggest barrier to them getting the support that they need. If we get the message out and the children are able to heal through those processes, then as a whole community, we've done our part. There definitely needs to be some type of program, some type of uh, services available to the children as there is for the vet. And Hunter and Gavin Moran also say they've found it helpful to engage in service projects or hobbies. They shared these photos with me of a teddy bear project and a healing through the arts program for military children. On WNCN.com, we've posted more about how their efforts to help other kids have also helped them. In the studio, Brandon Herring, WNCN News.